We are going to tackle a Kawasaki 21 horsepower V-twin two-barrel carburetor system this morning. Um, Real quick, we'll just go over a brief overview. This right now is an engine set up for, for gasoline. We're gonna make the appropriate moves to make it run on propane. Um, it's basically a small mixer system, just like you'd run a, a truck or a, any kind of tractor or forklift on. We've got a hot wire that's gonna come activate a fuel solenoid and a ground wire attached back through so that we have fuel that'll come, come to our unit. Um, we're using a conversion kit from carbon turbo basically we have a, a block adapter that we're going to insert between the carburetor and the uh, air cleaner housing so the first thing that we do have to do is remove the air cleaner and the housing that has it place the block in place took our fuel lines up and make it run on propane it sounds really simple uh, the items that you will need are a couple crescent wrenches a number 10 and a number 8 uh, head on your socket set a screwdriver maybe some wire ties and terminal connectors as you as you go we'll go ahead and get started I'll try to move as slow and or fast as necessary first we're gonna have to remove the air cleaner <laughs> a number 10 socket is what we're gonna be using almost for the entire time on the kit we're going to wind up using the uh, hot wire off the gasoline fuel bowl solenoid to run our propane solenoid to let us have fuel when we need it and shuts off when we don't. Our first piece of equipment we're going to deal with is tearing off the, uh, the existing studs that are there. The kits come with uh, longer studs and bolts, whatever is necessary to make the installation happen. Um, most generally, they they don't take too much effort, too much work to get done. You just got to take a little time and look at it beforehand. And always remember when you're changing the studs out, not to remove all four studs at the same time because then your carburetor falls and you have a, an issue with your linkage matching up if you have to put it back together. So we've got two short studs are in there now. We'll put two longer studs in to hold it in place so that we can change it out. Make sure you leave the gasket on the outside of the carburetor in place because they we have to have a gasket between each piece. And now we can actually start changing the other studs. This way our carburetor stays right in place and we don't have to chase it anywhere. In the kit came with our fuel block adapter that comes with it. It has arrows to show you the air and fuel mix flow, the way it goes. So we've got an arrow pointing that way, and you can also see the different sides of the barrel intakes. The smooth polished side is a side that needs to come where the air comes across, pulling the fuel in through the Venturi slits inside. So at this point, we can take your fuel block adapter on, and I'm going to go ahead and slide the additional gasket on that's included in the kit. Because if not, this is generally the time that you forget and you have to go back through it. In the kit as well, they supply you with a, a T supply line and an adapter. Since it's a two-barrel carburetor, we need to supply equal amounts of fuel to each side. If we came in through the bottom and out and around off this T, you can easily see that the supply in this way would give a more a heavier fuel supply straight through than turning the corner. So it is important to come straight in the bottom of the T and come out off the side so that you have equal amount of fuel to, the, to each chamber. Because if not, you'll have one cylinder getting all the fuel and the other not, and you'll be running on one cylinder. So it's just a matter of simply hooking up the hose clamps. Sorry, you get a good view of my back for a moment. Yeah. 
Okay. Now we can start back with placing our uh, air breather adapter back on. And which is par for the course for me. There it is. An extension adapter is brought in with the kit to uh, extend for your blow by piece so that everything goes back together. We're not missing any parts, no open ports or holes for our, our conversion. Okay. We're going to just go ahead and hook things back up. I'm going to disconnect our fuel lead for that fuel solenoid, our hot wire for it. It's off to the side here now. And I'm just going to connect the ground wire back from that solenoid so we don't lose it or so it doesn't get, out, get in the way and get damaged somewhere else along the way. Okay, I'm going to go back over just what we've done to this point. We've removed the air filter and the assembly for it. We've installed the fuel adapter block. We've connected the vapor lines to it, connected the hose clamps for our fuel. Now we're putting everything back together. So far I've used my number 10 socket almost exclusively. That and a nut driver head to tighten down the hose clamps. So you don't need uh, a huge toolbox full of, of tools that you don't already have. Just some regular standard industry tools and you can convert these engines. At this particular point we can go ahead and put our whole air breather attachment back on. Okay, so we're we're getting close. We've got our machine is pretty well put back together. We've got to connect our fuel supply to our mixer so that we've got gas to come to our carburetor. The last thing we always want to do is make sure we have our power hooked up, <clears throat> our fuel lines are connected, and everything is ready to go, and we'll be really close to, to running. Here is our hot wire for our fuel solenoid. We're going to connect it right to where the gasoline solenoid was, so we'll have fuel to our unit. We'll walk over everything once. Our cylinder is here, of course, we want to make sure our gas supply is turned on. We're going to double check our fuel, our ignition sources from the mower itself. We've got our hot wire and we're grounded. I need to hook it up to power so that we can start the mower. <coughs> We've got fuel in where it splits to our carburetor and everything else is pretty back, back to the same that our engine was when we started. Our fuel comes in through the lock off when it's armed. It lets the fuel go through the mixer and it comes out to us. On here is your set adjustment, your load adjustment screw. You uh, let loose of the nut and open it up to allow, allow fuel through. So this is where your adjustment is on how it runs and how it idles. You've got an idle adjustment as well that gets in through a, a small Allen wrench that you can fine tune your lower idles. Um, I think we're at the particular point where we can go ahead and try to start it. Here we go.
So if we look back at it, it didn't take us too long. Our carburetor stays on. We put an adapter block in at our air cleaner assembly back. We've got an extension piece for our blow-by hose. Our mixer is mounted with a lock-off. We've got electric to it, a ground. We're using existing equipment on the engine itself. This gasoline engine is now running on propane in just a matter of minutes.